What's up, hungry people? This week, we've been exploring the magical flavors of Hogwarts by concocting potions based off of our favorite moments, characters, and magical creatures. But today, I decided I wanted to recreate a bit of Hogwarts that you can find in the Muggle world at the wonderful wizarding world of Harry Potter, Cauldron Cakes. These cakes can be found at Honeydukes in Hogsmeade and consist of a chilled chocolate cake topped with icing flames. When you get a cauldron cake, it comes served in a reusable silicon cauldron, and the box has instructions on how to reuse your cauldron to make your own cake at home. However, the instructions are vague on how to recreate the cake itself beyond pour in your favorite cake mix. So I've taken it upon myself to make us a copycat single serving cauldron cake. We'll start by mixing together flour, sugar, dark chocolate cocoa powder, baking powder, baking soda, sea salt, vanilla, vegetable oil, buttermilk, and an egg. Use a whisking spell to stir together the ingredients until a thick batter forms. Make sure you get all of the clumps out. Then we'll go ahead and transfer the batter to the cauldron. You want to fill it up about two thirds of the way. Don't fill it up to the top because the cake will expand as it cooks and you may end up with an explosion in your oven. It's okay if you have a tablespoon or two left. You basically just want the cake peeking out of the top of the cauldron when it's finished. Bake according to the instructions on the packaging at 375 for about 30 minutes. When you can insert a toothpick into the center and it comes out clean, you'll know it's finished. I'm so excited with how this came out. This is exactly the result that you want. I let my cauldron cake cool to room temperature, then chilled it for about an hour while I prepared the icing. Just kidding. This is store-bought French buttercream. I've seen more and more muggle grocers selling their leftover cake icing in their bakery. I'm not great at making cake icing, especially buttercream, so this is a foolproof way to get perfect, vibrantly colored frosting. But definitely feel free to make your own from scratch if you're a Hermione in the kitchen. I wrapped my frosting in plastic wrap and then popped them into this handy piping bag with a drop tip or star tip attachment. I snipped the corners of the frosting wraps and then used the piping bag to pipe out the two colors. Yellow came out first and then mixed with the red to get that iconic flaming frosting top that you see at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal Studios. To get it as close to the original as possible, chill the cauldron cakes overnight so that they are cold all the way through. When I tucked into my first cauldron cake, it was almost as cold as ice cream, which was absolutely perfect on a hot and humid day in Florida. This is as close as I'll be getting to going to the wizarding world for a while. But being able to recreate a Hogsmeade favorite really makes me feel like I'm back at Hogwarts. What fictional feast should I whip up next? Let me know down in the comments below. I've been posting Harry Potter cocktails over on my Facebook page all week, along with a plethora of other Harry Potter recipes from years past. So make sure you follow me on Facebook to keep up with daily recipes, food memes, and more. I'll officially be back from break soon. I'm actually getting married next weekend. So if you like this video, don't forget to flip that sub button and ring the dinner bell to be notified of my latest recipes and foodie adventures that I post almost every week. As always, you can find this recipe and many more with step-by-step -step instructions on the starvingchefblog.com. I hope you all enjoyed and Wingardium Leviosa!